name is Wendy the Wendell Trap, and I'm reporting to you live from the beautiful beaches of Sanibel Island, Florida. Today, a few of my Mollusk friends will join me in helping you understand shelling etiquette through our eyes. We all know you love our beaches and collecting shells, so today we'll walk you through the do's and don'ts of shelling here on Sanibel through our eyes. When you're walking the beach, there are so many clues about what lives here, so it's a great learning experience. See that trail in the sand? Any idea what critter is making that path? What about that live shell strolling along in the water? And what's that? It looks sort of like a pickle. So many questions, so little time, right? Take your time and try to find some of the answers before you leave. The first thing you need to know once you arrive, there are a few signs around here. The best thing to do, read them carefully. The first and probably the most important one you should see is no live shelling. Pay attention to this one. I mean, really read it. If you don't pay attention to it now, you may have to pay for it later. There are steep fines for taking live mollusks, including live sand dollars, live sea stars, and live sea urchins. Violators are subject to a $500 fine and 60 days in jail for a first offense. Now for the main reason you're here. The shells, the sand, the water, the sunsets. Our beaches stretch for miles. The first rule of being a good sheller is to give everyone space. It's really not polite to get too close to another sheller when they are hunting for seashells. There are plenty of shells for everyone. Don't worry. Can you imagine bending over to pick up the shell of your dreams just to have someone slide in and scoop it up right under your nose? No fun, right? Now you've reached the water's edge and it's low tide. What do we have here? This creature may have five more arms. Yep, you guessed it, sea stars. By the way, I know you've probably been calling it a starfish for most of your life, but the correct way is sea star because these animals are not fish, right? And it truly does look like a star. You always see them in shallow water and it's very tempting to pick them up. Did you know these echinoderms can only live a short time out of the water? They have to stay fairly wet because they breathe through their tube feet, which carries oxygen from seawater. They need salt water to breathe. A few minutes out of the water is kind of a death sentence for them. If you want to take a picture of it, please leave it in shallow water so you can have a memory of this special moment and it can still survive. All of us sea creatures thank you. Let's move along. <gasps> oh no, I see someone looking at my friend Henrietta. She's a horse conch. Hello, Henrietta. Hi everyone, Henrietta here. I'm the largest seashell you'll probably see on the beach or in the waters here. I can get up to two feet long. That's just over 60 centimeters. Wow, right? I know you're large and mighty, Henrietta, but I can hear people talking about you, saying you're the biggest horse conch they've ever seen. I'm thinking you might be in trouble. Keep your eyes open, buddy. People are headed your way, and I'm not sure they know there's someone home. Oh, I see them. Keep your fingers crossed, please. Okay, it's all good. I see a shell ambassador from the Bailey Matthews National Shell Museum walking towards me. I know they'll educate the visitors and save the day. Shellers, please remember, if you are shelling here for Henrietta's sake and the rest of us live mollusks, if we are alive, you can take a peek at us, or even a picture of us. We know finding a live mollusk is a special treat, but we are just asking that you please take care, for our sake. While we're on the subject of living animals and their shells, let's talk about hermit crabs. They're a bit of a mystery to you, right? Hermit crabs don't have a seashell that is part of their body, one that they've made. They find an empty seashell to use for their protection. They have to find one that is just the perfect size for them. Let me introduce you to my hermit crab friend, Herbert. He's going to tell you how that works. Everyone, this is Herbert. Howdy everyone, Herbert here. So when we need a new shell, we look at our real estate market, just like you would if you wanted to buy a new house. The difference is we look for empty shells that aren't in use anymore for one reason or another. We won't go into those details. We have to find one that is a perfect fit for our body. Does that make sense? Signing off, Herbert the Hermit Crab. Back to you, Wendy. So, from one mollusk to another, uh, I mean, uh, one mollusk to a human, when you pick up a seashell and it looks empty, please look closer. Hermit crabs are fugitives when it comes to hiding from their predators. They can hide really far inside the shell, so you won't have a clue they're in there. Invisible, one might say. 
Even the tiniest of shells may have a hermit crab inside. Remember, if you bring them back home with you, it may be a long walk back to the water to rescue them. Let's talk a little about the Florida Sliding Conch. Did you know it's the visitor's favorite shell to bring home? When you see us on the beach or in the water, if we're empty, please feel free to add us to your shell bag. But if you happen to pick one of us up and we're still alive, please don't just throw us back into the water like a baseball. Us mollusks are delicate and have body parts just like you. We might not survive the impact when we hit the water. Just set us gently where you found us. Let's change the topic for a bit. I'd like to talk to you about my favorite, sea turtles. Did you know sea turtle nesting season officially begins on May 1st and ends on October 31st? Sea turtles are federally protected and the biggest threats to sea turtles are usually caused by humans. Yes, humans, but the good news is there are a few things you can do to change that. Turn off or shield all lights that are visible from the beach. Replace the light source with low watt yellow or amber bulbs, preferably LED. Do not use flashlights, lanterns, or your phone's flash while on the beach at night. Cover the lens of your flashlight with red cellophane to make it less distracting to sea turtles. We don't want to disorient sea turtle hatchlings from making their way to sea. Take all beach chairs and obstacles from the beach back home with you when you leave. We don't want to leave any barriers for the turtles. We know you will all love to build sandcastles and dig holes in the sand looking for shells. One thing to do before you leave the beach, fill in any holes you've made and flatten out the sand. Hatchlings and adult turtles have a hard enough time on land finding a place to lay their eggs and once hatched, getting back to the water. The sad fact is only an estimated one in 1,000 to 10,000 sea turtles will survive to become reproductively active adults. Let's give them a little help and make their journey a little easier. You'll be happy you took the extra time. Now on to another favorite of shellers. Sand dollars. These are kind of derms that are always a treat to find peeking out at you during a low tide. Remember, you cannot take live ones, so you need to be able to tell the difference. Are they alive or dead? That's the most common question on everyone's mind. If the sand dollar is white because it's been bleached by the sun after it died, it's okay to take it. It looks bald because it doesn't have any hair. But you may find dark ones, or those with a grayish color to them. They look and feel a little bit fuzzy if you touch them. When you put the sand dollar in your hand upside down, you will be able to see the tube feet and furry cilia, which are hair-like extensions moving around. That's a sure way to tell if it needs to go gently back in the water. Remember, the gray ones are tricky because they can sometimes be dead or alive. Always take a second look. Let's talk about shorebirds. They're everywhere you look. There are local shorebirds that stay all year, but many shorebirds may just be visiting. They fly in after a long journey, and when they arrive, they need to eat. You know how it feels to be hangry, right? I'm sure some of you are wondering about bringing your dog to the beach. Dogs are welcomed at Sandwell Beaches as long as they're on a leash that's no longer than eight feet. Of course, you must clean up after your dog, and if they dig a hole, please fill it in before you leave. Most of all, please don't let your dog chase birds. None of us like to see trash in the water or on the beach. There are all different kinds of litter, as you know. None of it is good for us sea creatures or our oceans. Mylar balloons, plastics of all kinds, fishing line, beach toys, forgotten sunglasses, snorkels, old beach chairs, all types of things can be found floating in the water that were left on the beach. I can go on and on. Please, if you see it in the water or on the beach, pick it up and throw it in a trash can. If you brought something with you, bring it back home. It's the right thing to do. Fishing line that has been left behind by fishermen, with and without hooks, poses a different kind of problem. Unfortunately, sometimes the line catches more than fish and can be extremely harmful to wildlife. You will see mind your line containers near your favorite fishing spots. Just toss your unwanted fishing line and any that you may find there. If you see an injured animal tangled in line for any reason, please call Crow. C-R-O-W on Sanibel. I hope you've enjoyed our shelling etiquette tour through the eyes of the creatures who live here. Don't forget to look up once in a while when you're out on the beach shelling. The views here are always spectacular. It's been so much fun sharing my island with you. This is Wendy the Wendell Trap, signing out from Sanibel Island, Florida.